Before Angular and React became popular, we could already create reusable plugins with jQuery. Imagine you see a beautiful component written in React, but you've got an Angular project. Now you're in bad luck because you cannot use this component. If instead of a component, this would be a jQuery plugin, you could easily integrate it into your project. So if you want to reuse components, just use jQuery plugins. Of course, I'm kidding here. But the reusability is a great aspect. And web components are here to port this over to the web standard. The main benefits I see in web components are they are framework agnostic, as mentioned, so we can reuse them in any page or app. And even better than jQuery, they don't require any library to be shipped to the browser. Additionally, they provide strong encapsulation with Shadow DOM. So we don't accidentally change internal styles or traverse over internal DOM elements of web components. Last but not least, they are a web standard, so they are quite future-proof. And the browser support is around 97% at the time recording this video. This should be sufficient for most modern web pages and applications. Apart from the good browser supports, web components are already widely used. This statistic from Chrome shows us that around 15-20% to of all page loads register at least one web component. So the adoption of web components is quite high. Everything mentioned so far points to the advantages of web components. But as there is a shadow DOM, there is also a shadow side of web components. Some of those issues can be overcome with tooling or may be resolved over time. But others may prevent you from using web components right now, depending on your needs. First, we have the low-level API of web components. While it's great to have a standard for building encapsulated components, this standard does not include rendering of templates or state management. If you want to create web components without any aiding library, you are left with vanilla JavaScript. Luckily, there are some libraries to efficiently create maintainable web components. I've had a great experience with lit so far. The second issue I had with web components is the custom element registry. This registry is globally exposed on the window object and you can call the define method on it to register those components. At first glance, this may look like a nice feature, because we can register this component only once and use it anywhere within our page. The drawback is that you can easily forget to register this element. The missing registration will silently fail and you will end up with a dump element. Imagine you have a module A that declares the custom element. Then you have a module B which renders an instance of this element without explicitly depending on module A. Now, there may be some cases where module A and module B will be loaded to the page. In this case, everything works as expected. But if module B is loaded without module A, which can happen with a code split for example, then the rendered component will not work. Of course, we could write tests that check whether this dependency is fulfilled. But those tests would have to explicitly check the fulfillment of this dependency. This is very repetitive and easy to forget. In contrast, in most modern web frameworks, component dependencies are checked at compile time. This is also true for lit. We can use the lit plugin for TypeScript to check our component dependencies at compile time. Another issue is server-side rendering. 
For a long time, server-side rendering was difficult to achieve with web components. The slotting feature, for example, prevents us from simply placing pre-rendered content within our custom elements. But now there is a relatively new feature called Declarative Shadow DOM, which allows us to pass a portion of Shadow DOM into our web components. Right now, the browser support is around 92% and the feature can be polyfilled. The lit community is currently working on an SSR package for web components built with lit. But here's the catch. Before you can use it in your favorite SSR library or meta framework, this package has to be integrated into the server-side rendering process. Depending on the tool you are using, this may require some time. My fourth issue with web components is the bad integration with React. Right now, React does not allow registering event handlers and writing to properties in a declarative way within the template. But this will change with React 19, which is currently in the release candidate phase. Meanwhile, you can use the lit React package to create wrapper components for React. Another issue when using web components is that some browser extensions don't work with web components. I guess the reason for this is that many extensions have to traverse the DOM to work as expected. And to traverse into the shadow DOM of a web component, you have to explicitly do this by referencing the shadow root of the element. Another little annoyance with web components is that you cannot easily do hot module replacement. There are some workarounds, but they only partially work. So depending on your application load time and the complexity of the state you want to keep during hot module replacement, this can be an issue for you. So whether it's a good idea to use web components really depends on how your application or page will be used. Also, some frameworks like React may impose a hurdle to make efficiently use of them. It also makes sense to double check which extensions or tools are used to process your page. Those should be compatible with web components. In the case of my blog, I initially started with using lit. One major decision driver to leave web components behind and use quick instead was the missing support of the Speechify plugin. For internal back office or highly interactive applications, it's more likely that it makes sense to use web components. Imagine a medium or larger sized company with a lot of web applications based on various frameworks. Now there comes a rebranding and you want to have a consistent UI across all your applications. In this case, it's good to use web components to build a library which can be used by all the apps. So all in all, it definitely makes sense to have a rough overview of web components to make good future-proof decisions. If you want to learn more about lit, you can have a look at this video. Otherwise, here is another video that may be interesting for you. In this sense, never stop learning and see you in the next video.